Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey everyone, Lauren here with another great business to discuss on this episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. Today's guest is Lee and he's selling his e-commerce business on Empire Flippers Marketplace. So welcome to the show, Lee. How are you doing today? Hey Lauren, yeah, I'm really good, thank you. Great. I'm looking forward to talking more about you and your business. But before we dive in, let's go over a brief summary of the business. As I mentioned, this is an e-commerce business. It's in the survival and securities niche, and it was created in January 2019. The average monthly revenue for the business is $19,823, and it makes an average of $6,689 per month in net profit. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing number 56092 to learn more about the business. Or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. Now that I've given a general overview of the business, let's see what assets are included in the sale. There are three domains and all site content and files, landing pages that were built on Unbounce, a Shopify store, a branded iOS and Android app with over 1,800 members, an email list with around 12,000 subscribers, a trademark, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube social media pages and accounts, SOPs, supplier introductions, and contractor and employee contracts. So now that I've given a general overview of the business, let's hear from the seller. Lee, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Yeah, so it's funny really, because originally I was actually a heating engineer. I won't tell you my life story, but I'm about 37 now. So about seven years ago, I decided that I wanted to come off the tools, doing a physical job, kind of got inspired by Tim Ferriss's four-hour work week, as I'm sure many people have been inspired by that book. And I just really wanted to, I was in quite a good position financially where a lot of my mortgage was paid off, I had quite a small amount of bills, and I wanted to create a passive income for myself by creating an online business. So yeah, I ended up creating a different online business, I started creating it, I had absolutely no experience whatsoever and um, yeah, I made my first business seven years ago. And I sold that business two years later in the electric skateboarding and longboarding niche. And that's how I got started, really. That's a really fantastic story. And what made you choose the e-commerce business model in particular? I started off like a lot of people trying to do drop shipping. And actually, I bought an eBay business to get started. And that was a big chunk of change. It was like £3,000. Like it wasn't even a business, it was literally an eBay account that I bought to create a business on. And I started trying to drop ship furniture. And randomly, I listed an electric skateboard on eBay and it just started to sell. And I was like, hmm, this is interesting. And then I quickly realized that eBay wasn't really for me. And I didn't know anything about Shopify then. And I built a WordPress site and I kind of went on Fiverr and stuff like that. And I, and I, I do it very differently now, but back then, I ranked the, the, the main keywords very quickly and it just started kicking off, really. I bought some skateboards from China and obviously this is a completely different business seven years ago. I bought some a small amount of products from China and yeah, before I could really think about it, it just started kicking off. So it was really exciting and I kind of could see that it was something I could systemize and put a very small amount of actual workload in early on, which was my goal was to essentially directly answer your question is just to have more free time. Yeah, well, that sounds like a fantastic learning experience. How did you come up with the idea to start this particular business that you're selling now? Yeah, so this business, a friend of mine, through my ties back in the heating industry, a good friend of mine got his van broken into twice in one day. You know, I really felt for this guy. It's almost unbelievable. And there are thousands of pounds worth of tools and damage that it did. And I started doing some digging into this because it even happened to me in the past. I've had my van broken into family members. And some of the statistics I found, you know, sure, it's not just 
a UK problem, but statistics I found in the UK is that van break-ins and security in vans is the van break-ins is huge, and security in vans as standard is not very good. So there's a big, big problem. Large amount of people experiencing this problem on a day-to-day basis. Every 23 minutes in the UK, a van gets broken into, which completely shocked me. Yeah, and it doesn't really seem like the problem's being solved. So, yeah, I wanted to get in there and launch a product that was going to help tackle this problem. Certainly sounds like you're catering to a good gap in the market there. How does your business primarily make money? Yeah, it makes money by selling our our core product, which is a van security product. We make a good amount of margin on that. So we need to dig right into the whole business model or are you going to ask me sort of separate questions on that? Yeah, and I was just wondering if there's maybe a subscription service attached or if you make money through affiliate links or is it purely just revenue from the product? Yeah, purely revenue from the product. Okay, fantastic. It certainly sounds like you've got a passion for the business and it started from a place of genuine need. How come you're selling the business now? Well, right now I'm staring at a load of boxes. I think I said to you before we got onto the recording that I'm moving today. And yeah, one of the reasons we're moving is we just had a baby five weeks ago and I wanted to buy us a house and kind of get settled. And um, I just want to really clear up some headspace for a while and um, and just sort of create some more time to spend with my family. So that's kind of the main reason because I've been in e-commerce and just working away for the last seven years without a real break. So I just really want to free up some space really. Yeah, it definitely sounds like your hard work is paying off. You've had a great learning journey so far with that initial business that you started and now with this one. Is there anything that you learned in particular from this business that you would apply to future sites or businesses? Probably quite a broad question. <laughs> For me, it always starts with product market fit because after this, like, this, this product was so unbelievably successful. Like my biggest problem running this business has been able to keep stock. Like probably this business could have made tens of thousands of more revenue maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars in more revenue last year if I had ordered more stock. So that's one lesson is actually being more confident and ordering more stock. I've been conservative and probably overly risk averse. And even right now, I think we're going out of stock again in a few days. In hindsight, I probably should have pushed harder for ensuring that we've always got stock on the shelves. And I kind of diverted from my original point where I was saying as well is um, – Product market fit is key. Sell product that the market wants rather than just trying to come up with ideas of different products to sell. Actually, because this, this product worked so well, I'm going back to where I started, but it gave me a lot of confidence to launch other products, to start trying to launch other products. And I realized what a hit this product was because everything else I was trying wasn't getting anywhere near as much as success. So kind of what I've taken from that would have been to double down on what actually really works well rather than keep trying to diversify. I know some people say the complete opposite to that, but from my experience, I had some really worked and I probably invested a lot of time and money into trying to launch other products and to kind of create different revenue streams and have actually taken me away from our main income stream, been able to sell business for a lot more, but all of my focus into the thing that works and continues to work which is our core product. Yeah, that's really great advice. And then on the flip side of the coin, was there anything you tried that didn't work? I know you mentioned diversifying your products. Was there anything else that you tried that just didn't really get any traction? It's kind of what I just said, really, because our biggest audience is tradesmen. So I even went off on this little side mission to create like a tool bag because I thought, well, we're selling this great product, a security product, got an audience, got an email list, let's create a tool bag, they all need tools, and it just probably invested about 5K and I heard up hard-earned cash into designing this really cool tool bag, got samples from China, and luckily I didn't buy a load of stock because it just fell completely flat on its face, couldn't even generate one sale. So I completely misread the market and I would say, not, wouldn't say wasted, I learned a valuable lesson I suppose, but yeah, just reiterating my point earlier. 
yeah, unfortunately, those are the sort of lessons you can only really learn with experience. In terms of your audience, do you do anything in terms of marketing to bring consumers in? Where does the majority of your traffic come from? Yeah, absolutely. So iOS 14 hit, drop the mic, <laughs> and um, we did all right. Our CPA on Facebook did go up initially. You know, I was starting to worry, but it's come back down now. And Facebook's reporting isn't as accurate as it used to be. I think everyone's finding that. Sort of inside Facebook, it's sort of saying our CPA is seven or eight pounds, but looking into our Shopify dashboard, I'm sort of estimating we're hitting five or six pound CPA, which is pretty near where we've been at pre-iOS 14. Really fortunately for us, a lot of our sales, I can't give you the exact statistic, but it's probably around half of our sales actually coming from other platforms. We get a hell of a lot of people search our brand on Google because we've got a strong brand name. Also, everyone who buys the product, they get like a reflective stick on their van door, which kind of is a thief deterrent sort of sticker. And we've sort of used that as a bundle to try and increase our sales which work quite nicely i think it's worked quite well as a free marketing effort because we've probably got 10 to 15 thousand vans in the uk driving around with those stickers on them as i was saying we get a lot of sales just through people searching our our brand name we're on page one for our main keywords as well yet yeah, being google pretty much everything we've run traffic on gives us a cpa that that works in terms of paid so our online traffic generation is quite broad Fantastic. Yeah, it certainly sounds like you're winning in that department. If you were to keep the business, what are some of the ways that you would try and grow it further? Yeah, so this is something I did start to take a stab at last year. What I would do is I would completely customize our core product. So upgrade and customize our core product, which would need an investment in R&D. But I do believe it would take the brand to the next level but it would require investment and time to create a product from scratch and you are moving into a territory of product development rather than being an e-commerce business owner. So that's definitely one thing I would do. Another thing I would do would be to look at potentials because we have had people reach out to us from magazines and stuff like that, wholesalers wanting to stock our products. And because I'm always so well online, I haven't really looked to get these products into stores and wholesalers and stuff like that. But there is a margin there, so there is an opportunity to do that, and it's probably something I could have invested more time into, but for me, that would mean taking another person on the business to handle the distribution of the product, basically. So, yeah, I don't think I've really had the bandwidth to add that sort of additional channel to the business. Yeah, but those are certainly interesting ideas and definitely something that potential buyers could consider. You no, know, as I say, we have been, um, I think I mentioned, we've been approached by some significant retailers in the UK yeah it's definitely a a big channel it's worth looking at yeah there's definitely a lot of potential for growth there in terms of your day-to-day role in the business can you describe the amount and type of work that you do for the business to maintain it to be honest most of the I spend a lot of time thinking about I think a lot of business owners will relate to this the, the business is always taking up a significant portion of my RAM in my head but in terms of like day to day operations it might be just responding to a few messages, um, maybe checking a dashboard. Some days I don't, I suppose I probably check dashboards and sales and stuff. I probably check the Shopify dashboard daily to make sure sales are coming in. But in terms of like advertising dashboards, I don't really check those at all. Maybe weekly I'll check those just to make sure we're all on track. So you really it's checking advertising dashboard weekly, Shopify dashboard daily, and replying to, maybe replying to a few messages every day. And that's probably, you know, 10 minutes a day. Yeah, it certainly sounds like you've managed to streamline the business quite effectively. Certainly, yeah. As I say, the main thing for me, and some people this this probably wouldn't affect, but for me, it just takes up a good portion of headspace thinking about a business rather than, yeah, actually running it. Yeah, certainly. And for someone who's not familiar with this particular niche or the business model, what skills or requirements would you say that people would need in order to run this business effectively? In terms of like, the niche, I would be joining, there's a lot of really useful Facebook groups where you can sort of learn the language of our customers. I won't say those in this call, but you can really learn the language of the customer. And I would recommend looking into that for advertising campaigns and copy because you can really learn a lot more about how it affects people. And I spend a lot of time doing that. 
and yeah, anyone who's got a, a pretty good idea with e-commerce really could run the business, but you could outsource that to agencies as long as you, you know the CPA that you're looking for. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward really now. We've got quite a strong brand. Yeah, it sounds like you've put all the hard work in and now it should be a fairly easy business to take over. I would say so, yeah. The business literally more or less runs itself. We have a VA, you're probably going to ask me about that anyway, but yeah, we have a VA who deals with all the customer service. She might send me a WhatsApp message once a week or something for a question, but we have all that systemized, all the customer service is systemized. A lot of the advertising and stuff like that is all systemized. So yeah, it kind of looks after itself a lot of the time. Fantastic. So what would you identify as the biggest risks with the business that buyers should be aware of? Biggest risk would probably be, I mean, I can't say this because it'd be predicting the future, but the biggest risk would be, I've been running this business for a couple of years and I haven't really seen any major competitors, but the biggest risk would be competitors coming in and saturating the niche. But because it's in such a niche and we're so good at what we do and we've been doing it for a long time, it will be hard for someone to muscle in because we've got such a strong brand. But I would say to mitigate risk, it would be to further innovate the core product. And I think once that's been done, I think the business is a really defensible, you know, you'll have a moat around the business because the need for van security in the UK is not going to go away for a long time. You know, as I said, a van gets broken to every 23 minutes. So that need is there. So I would say, yeah, the only risk, which probably like any business, is competitors, but we have any trouble in that regard. Yeah, you certainly have the advantage of being first in the door in your niche by the sounds of it. Yeah. So speaking of competitors, would you be willing to commit to a non-compete agreement? Yeah. Wonderful. And then are you open to negotiating something like an earnout? As I said, for me, selling this business, the main reason why I'm doing it is to get some headspace a bit of a break, spend time with my family, get sailed into where we're moving to. So um, that wouldn't really be an option for me. Yeah, that's fair enough. And how much support are you willing to offer buyers of this business to ease the transition? Probably do 28 days. Of email support and Skype calls? Yeah, we'd have to put a little bit of a limit on the Skype calls, but it could certainly help out that way. Fantastic. And what advice would you give to our listeners that you wish you knew when you started out? Yeah, like find an industry that you have inside knowledge in and then keep testing products until you find a product that performs unbelievably well, so much better than everything else you've tested, and then go all in on that product, make it better, build a business around it, and try not to get sidetracked. And I'm sure a lot of people will completely contradict that advice who may like be far more successful than me. That's kind of what I've personally learned in my journey. Yeah, certainly. And it certainly depends on each business individually. You mentioned when you started out that you started out in dropshipping and then moved across to e-commerce. For people who are just starting out with their own online businesses, why do you think the e-commerce business model is a great way to start out? Well, obviously, dropshipping is very low risk. So you can learn how to advertise and build up your skills, learn some kind of learn the fundamentals, dropshipping. But yeah, once you've learned the fundamentals, I would definitely, as quickly as possible, move into starting an actual brand and um, building your own list and having your own products in the country you're selling them and building something that's really tangible and, and yours and something you keep building up and growing. So is that, does that answer the question or is that half answer? I'm not sure. No, I think that's great advice. And then the last question of the show, which is sort of the most important question, if you had to put yourself into the shoes of a buyer, why do you think your business is a business worth buying? Probably for quite a few reasons that we've gone over, but yeah, just a few at the top of my head. We are unaffected by all this shipping crisis that's going on at the moment um, because our products are small and light and ready to ship by air. We have a diverse, like our product works pretty much on all traffic channels, Google, Bing, Facebook. So we have a diverse range of traffic bringing us sales in. We're not reliant on Facebook. We're strongly ranking on Google We've built a really strong brand, which is trademarked and very recognizable. And I imagine because we were getting like 0.01p video views and we've run that for a long time. So I imagine probably millions of people have actually seen our brand. Yeah, and our product solves a, a real problem. People need it. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's some more things as well. There's, there's, there's huge potential to expand the business using 
wholesale and resale. It was a good opportunity to innovate and improve the products. Yeah, we've pretty much been consistent since business conception, apart from when I've misforecasted stock. I mentioned earlier where I haven't been forecasting the amount of inventory we've needed. So, yeah, I mean, just through some simple mistakes that I've made, we probably could have looked at a valuation that was 30 or 40% bigger. So a new owner can make those adjustments probably quite easily. Also, we're not on Amazon or any other channels like that. So there's a lot of opportunities to expand and improve the business. Yeah, it certainly sounds like you've got a great business there and those are all very compelling reasons for people to buy it. Is there anything else that you'd like to share that I might have missed? Yeah, actually, we didn't talk about the app. Yeah, you're welcome to share a bit about that. Yeah, so last year I kind of realized from all the Facebook groups, you know, there's tool theft groups and stuff like that on Facebook and there's a real community in, in a tradesman in, in the UK and especially around tool theft because it's such a horrific thing to get your van broken into and your tools stolen and, you know, and people are looking for that outlet. So I noticed that there's a big community. It's like a negative place, but people need, as I say, that outlet. And I was surprised to see how community orientated it was with thousands of people all talking to each other about their tool theft experiences. So that kind of led me to thinking we should create our own community, which we do have a community. We have our own Facebook group, quite a big group with um, just under 2,000 members. But even better than that, which actually serves a purpose, the, the app is on Android and iOS, and everyone who buys the alarm gets sent a link to download the app. And we've got about close to 2,000 people on the app now. Um, it's completely free. You download it, and the app it is a really nice app. It works a bit like Neighbourhood Watch for van owners. So if you see, you know, some dangerous looking suspicious people hanging around your area and you think they might be breaking into vans or you hear of a van being broken into in your area say a hotel a lot of people report them in hotels you just press a button on the app to say report an incident pop in the details share a picture and stuff like that and then everyone within a 15 kilometer radius on the app will be notified about van breaking or suspicious activity because a lot of the time these incidents happen in like clusters. So it'll be like a small area. So we think if you're parking up in a Hilton Hotel, say you're planning to park up in a Hilton Hotel on Thursday night, and then on Wednesday night, you see on the app, there's been an alert in that hotel. That's not an area where you want to be parking your van up. Yeah, it's helped a lot of people, the app. Um, we haven't monetized it, as I say, it's completely free, but there's huge opportunities there and the software is there, the app is there. So there's a lot of things that can be we're done with that and we're literally just throwing that into this business so that potentially could be very nice for a new buyer yeah that sounds like a fantastic app and it speaks to what you mentioned before of identifying a need and then creating a product to cater for it yeah, exactly and the other thing i was thinking with the app is if we did put the product in stores or we did sell a product on amazon sort of a big sort of circle on our packaging which highlights to the customers that download the app so hopefully people will see that in the packaging. They bought it from, say, a store, and then they'll download the app, and then voila, we have got their email address and contact details so we can keep speaking to that customer. Yeah, fantastic. A brilliant idea. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners regarding your business? It probably is, but yeah, right now, I think that's it. Well, fantastic. Thanks so much for taking the time to be on the show, Lee. It's been great talking to you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. All right, everyone, thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 56092. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about the business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.